Hey guys, and welcome. My name's NG Paradox, and welcome back to our world in Europa Universalis 4. Now, I just want to kind of highlight to you guys again, as I did in Crusader Kings 2, um, I'm not used to making videos like this. I normally do, like, Let's Plays. I play the game and talk, and I've gotten very used to that. And so you'd think this would be easier, but I'm still trying to get used to, obviously, how do we do good commentary for you guys as we try and look at the world and what's going on so you can get enough detail but not too much detail it gets too boring etc and of course for each game i need to find out how to manage each observation thing as best as we can so for example in europe universe 4 you know i need to be using things like this we can click this to select what one country sees whenever i go zooming into a country i've noticed it's very difficult to know what's going on because we can see every single army in the world and so by clicking this button, we can only see what maybe that nation sees. This allows us to get a better idea of what's going on at the time. If we click this, we can see the whole world once again. So that's something I need to keep in mind, as well as the diplomatic tab, so we can see kind of a better idea of what each country is doing with other nations, who they like, who they hate, etc. This will make things a lot easier to follow and give us a better idea of how things look for everyone so i'll be trying to use this stuff a lot more often hopefully hopefully i remember to do that but it's still a learning curve for me i still need to get used to everything and uh deccan is actually sunny which surprised me and its government rank is actually kingdom so i don't know what happened here in uh india at one point they became sunny not completely sure when that happened Maybe it was during a war, maybe in EU4, maybe the ruler became sunny at the end of Crusader Kings 2. But it does mean, when it comes to religion, we could see the Sunnis return in India. Because remember, in the rest of the world, they're mostly gone apart from like in East Africa and kind of the central western Africa. Well, I guess it'd be east-west Africa. Yeah, it's very confusing. Um, but they might return it, they might replace the Hindus here if they do. So we could see them come out and be powerful under this this kingdom. Because it's a kingdom at the moment, not an empire. But we'll see. We'll see how things go. Let's let time go by. And this will allow us to keep an eye on wars and stuff if we try out these different things. Such as each country. Plus, I think it will run. But as you can see, the frames are very bad if I try and zoom in to what's going on. So, for example, we want to look at the Byzantine Empire right now. They're currently in their war with their vassals. And at the moment, the Cyprus War for Independence... They are currently just winning, but it's basically even. Uh, this way we can actually see exactly what's going on. We can see their allies, where they are, the enemy army. See, using this stuff would be a lot easier. So hopefully this will be better for you guys. We can see everything for them, the money, everything. So I'm, I'm looking forward to doing it this way a lot better. Also, we'll decrease some. There's a big war like this going on. I think we're going to decrease time sometimes down the four speed. Other times we'll keep it at five speed and we'll jump around. But... This allows for better frames. I find at 5 speed, the frames are not very good. At 4 speed, it's pretty good. And European of size 4 is a lot quicker than Crusader Kings 2. So I don't think us thinking this will take too long is something to worry about. Crusader Kings 2, I think, was a good amount of time we had in there. We can see the Bulgarians and their allies. Look at the Bulgarian fleet just there. Byzantine army is kind of popping around. We've got the Cyprus army over here. If the allies could get their men together, if the va the vassals could get their men together, they'd be pretty hard to stop. At the moment, France is helping out up north. If we could look at France as well. Now, France has a coalition against them. So, France obviously could be in trouble right now. If we look at the diplomacy, if we can see here, they've also got a few people in a coalition against them. They've got claims, I think, on all of these lands. They have claims on so much land, obviously, due to Crusader Kings 2. Really like that from Crusader Kings 2. It keeps a lot of that stuff. So it keeps a lot of information from Crusader Kings 2. So really happy to see that. They're currently helping out Byzantium. You can see their friend here is them. They're also very friendly with Lithuania. And, uh, of course, their vassal. As well. Oh, a call to arms from Lithuania. Okay, but they're obviously friends of them. They've got them as, yep, yeah, okay, out of France. They have a few friends uh, here and there. Um, but we're going to go back, obviously, to... Oh, no, this is... I am Byzantium now. I need to get rid of this. How do I get rid of this? Do I do I join the war? Okay. I'm, just, I'm worried if I click decline or accept it, it might actually do it. <laughs> that would be something that would worry me a little bit. 
Um, how about the English and the British? How are you guys doing? So we've got the English over here, allied with Gelray. If we could look at the French, I guess. So we're looking here, we can see the French here. They're, they're not doing very well on money right now, which is kind of surprising. They have a high 100% liberty desire. So France is in a very turbulent situation. They could easily fall apart and lose a lot of their power very quickly. Coalitions against them. Um, they have, of course, the vassal who wants to escape. Um, what about the British? How are they doing right now? No, they have no war there. England currently at war with Lithuania. So England are fighting Lithuania. Lithuania on their own. So what happened? In the English conquest of Gloucester. Okay, so they're currently attacking for Gloucester. Okay, so Lithuania has Gloucester. The English want it back. You know, it's, it makes sense to me. That makes sense to me. I'm not sure if Lithuania can do much about that. Great Britain is basically Ireland and like most of Scotland, which just, just makes it really weird. Uh, Norway, what can you see right now? Let's have a quick look at what Norway can see. Norway can't see anywhere over here just yet. We're going to have to wait a lot of time until they get some ideas. Hopefully they pick exploration ideas. That's the one I think we all want to see them do. They've got administration. They've got economic ideas. Why, Norway? Why? Ugh, you need to find a new world. That's what we all want to see you do. We want to see you go to the new world and save your religion and your people. It's the only way. This war looks like it's never going to end. Like, how many men does both sides? 130,000 men. 90, yeah, so Byzantium has the advantage because they got France and their vassal. Actually, France is vassal. Yeah, wow. But Cilicia has very low enthusiasm. But Bulgaria and Cyprus are really up for this. And Cyprus is in charge. But if Cilicia pulls out, that could be bad. But that's starting to go down the medium. Starting to go down a bit these days. So it, it could be anyone's win here. I think that could really go anyway. It's whoever basically gives up first, I feel like. Who can ever kind of just slowly trickle out the other person first is probably going to win this situation. What is going on with you then? Mauritania and Malay. Slemson, what is this? What's going on? What's going on with you? What are you up to? What have you been doing? Diplomacy. Go see your nation. So, you're currently at war with them. Mauritania and Mali. Attacker against Mauritania in the Tamseni Conquest. Ah, so you've attacked them. Mozabite separatists. And did you just make peace? You did just make peace. Mali's doing pretty well. Mali is all the way up to here. Let's have a quick look at Mali. Mali's also at war right now. I am clicking them. Maybe I can't have this up. Okay, there we go. That is why. So I'm still learning. Still learning all this stuff here. Wag Conquest of Gondor. Mauritania and Mali versus Wag. Who's Wag? Mauritania? Uh, there's obviously the vassal of France right there. Huh. Which one's Wag? I don't remember the country called Wag. We got Noop Mossy. I can't see them right now. Okay, let's have a quick look. Why are you wag? What the? <laughs> Why are you guys fighting? Wait, 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 wait. Manny can't even see them. Wag, but why Mauritania? Mauritania must have some land over there. Okay, let's have a quick look at Mauritania then. Let's look at what can you see? So you can see over here. You must have land over here. Where was wag? This is wag, and that is. Okay, so Mauritania does have that piece of land. Who the hell are these? Who the hell is wag? Who is Wag? Emir Madi Munarid. Ah, oh, the Munarid family. I remember them. Yep, from Crusader Kings 2, definitely. They're not a vassal. They're an independent nation just here. Very nice. Yeah, Shia. Okay, very good Good for them. We're happy for them. Well, that that's, that's lovely. Let's go back to the Byzantium. Let's see how things go. Oh, oh dear. What? Okay, Bulgaria has pieced out, apparently. Yeah, Bulgaria's pieced out, and Byzantium's allies have pieced out. What happened to... Oh, my. Look at these revolts. We've got Poitou separatists. So, Poitou separatists, one of the kind of breakthrough French noble rebels. France is in big trouble right about now. 
They're no longer allies either, so that's good. Byzantium and France, no longer allies. Good to see that. That's something we wanted. What happened to Bulgaria? Are you free? No. They still want to get away, though. They're still rebellious in nature. I don't think Byzantium can hold these vassals right now. You know, the medieval age has just led to chaos, shall we say. The medieval age in CK2, you know, w with the hordes and stuff and Byzantium, you know, spreading and becoming so big and whatnot, and obviously Francia and the Holy Roman Empire becoming so powerful. It led to many dispersed cultures and religions and stuff, and now they're starting to all find their independence in the days of 1400s. We, we could say this century. This century is the time when people start to get a bit more nationalistic, shall we say, against some of these vast empires. That, that's how we're going to look at things. But with them... Have, oh, no, it's gone to medium. Oh, Cyprus is the only one left in. Who was the other one? Yes, yeah, Cilicia. They are still a vassal. It's basically a one-on-one -on -one duel right now. And Byzantium is only medium. Cyprus is high. But Byzantium has a lot more men now. Oh, really? I told you it's going to be down to who can just hold on the longest. That's how it was always going to go. England um, are winning against Lithuania. Kind of expected that. Sweden have got a nice hold, though, over southern England right now. And, of course, they've got you know bits here in Ireland. I can see Great Britain and Sweden coming to blows at some point. They're both on medium now. Who is going to fall first? Um, how's the Holy Roman Empire doing? That's the papacy, sorry. Uh, Curia, Bulgaria is currently the controller of the Curia. Bulgaria, interesting. Hmm. Holy Roman Emperor. We have, of course, got Baden being voted for once again. There's only 13 princes left now. I mean, there was only, was it 15 before? So it's, it's not a massive difference, to be honest. But that's what we have. We're going to keep an eye on like, the big wars going on in the world. Those are things we want to see, because obviously there are wars here and there every so often. So we'd like to keep an eye on them. When they disappear, we then go check out the rest of the world and see what's going on there until we find another big war. Because, like I say, we're going to go probably about four speed each time. We'll see how this goes at four speed, I think. And then we'll see where we go from there. Uh, Egyptians seem to be at war. Fezzan and Mazab. I can't see that going well for Fezzan. But, you know, they're, they're basically already dead already. How's it now? Byzantium is low morale. Minus 5%. Not lost a big army. Where's the big armies right now? So we've got Cyprus over here. The armies are sticking together. We've got 32,000 men from Byzantium riding. Nope, they're only coming to here. And the Cyprus men have escaped into Cyprus. It, it's a mess of the vassals' land. We need them to gain independence and start fixing things. You know, getting better borders. That's what we want. Yep, not looking good for Byzantium right now. Unless they can sort of get their people to be supportive of the war. They can get these guys to attack one of the big blocks there. They look pretty good. They look pretty good. It's just a shame Bulgaria left. Bulgaria had one of the main parts of the army as well. Um, Cilicia, of course, you know, over here, down here, up here. Ah, what a mess this is. Uh, Egyptian Maghreb, there you go. So Egypt did take Fezzan. It's like I was saying before, they're also at war with Mazab as well. And they're probably going to take that. It's like I said, they're going to start cleaning up their borders because they'll start attacking their neighbours. Everyone in EU4 always attacks their neighbours. It's going to take a while. I think even by the end of EU4, we're still going to see horrible borders in most of Europe. But the rest of the world, obviously, uh, obviously looks a little bit better, you know. Slightly better. <laughs> Slightly better. Not completely, but it will get better in time, hopefully. Deccan, though. Still got the vassals. The Delhi's at war with Tirabluktu and Tibet. Tibet not looking so great. Minus 29. Hmm. Omani Persia. So we've got Oman down here. So Oman's doing a little, they've got a little piece of land. They're currently at war of Arabia, Galilee, and Yemen. Now, Galilee. Isn't Galilee over here? Yeah, Galilee. What is, like, your position right now? You are Catholic. Okay, so they are Catholic, but they're helping Arabia, which is kind of odd. Um, Duke Thomas de Bray, again, a member from CK2. Good to see. Arabia, though, is also Catholic. Ah, oh, they did convert, didn't they? Queen Suleiman. And how's the war still? 
They're both low. They're both low, but Byzantium's winning at 9%. Only just. But they're starting to take all the land down here. Cyprus men have kind of walked all the way over here for now. It's not... Uh, looks like they're not going to fight. I don't think these armies are going to fight. That's not what's going to happen. They've got 12,000 more, you know... It, they're not going to fight. It's just going to down to whoever gives up first. So we're, we're going to leave that for now. Goodbye, Byzantium. Let's go check out what's going on in the rest of the world. Ah, J Jin. Let's see your diplomacy. Amdo does not like you. And you're currently at war with them. And Kashmir. And Deccan. Oh, Deccan has now gone to war with them. <gasps> Deccan at war with Jin. What is this about? Defended. Deccan conquest of Bundelkhand. So who are you attacking, really? Bihar. So they were attacking Bihar. That was one of the tributaries of Jin. So yeah. Yutsang and Yalung. That's quite a big fight for Deccan. I don't know if they have the men. Have you got the men for this? I, I just don't think you do. Look at that. Look at their enemies. They got so many. A hundred thousand. I mean, they got 94,000. That's a lot. And 21. It's not actually that big a difference considering they have 3,000 more men, um, horses. And they have about 14,000 more men. You could easily, in this such a, in a big war like this, you could easily take out lots of their men in one go. And get it to even amounts. And so far the Deccans are actually winning both battles they've been in. Interesting. So they're currently winning at the moment. They're taking over a lot of Bihar. Can Jin get their men there in time? That's really the question. If they can't get their men there in time... Jin might lose land for Bihar. Technically, they don't lose any land, but Bihar will lose land, and you know, that's sad. Uh, Korchin right now has Korchin. So Korchin is a tributary state. Uh, the Korchin family. Buryatia is not looking so great these days. Um, the 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 descendants of Genghis Khan, occupied by Mongol separatists. They're, they've they've been on better times. They've had better times than. Uh, now and we could look at this let's have a look at you then so we have a, a a big strong japan nation right here and actually there's a couple there's two who are basically vying for power we have over here um yusugi yusugi yeah they seem to be doing pretty well right now and we have over here hosokawa so hosokawa and them Seem to be the two main people in charge. He's a lord. He's a lord. Seems to be the two main symbols here. Second Yusugi conquest of Hatakayama. So they're at war right now. He's completely defeated them. He doesn't have that many men there. Only 9,000 like troops overall. That's really small. What's the diplomacy like over here? So you're at war with them up here. He's got some friends up here with royal marriage. Um, with royal marriage. Okay, so he's got some friends around. They're not really doing any diplomacy outside of Japan. But it looks like we will definitely see Japan form, I think, through one of these two. We'll keep an eye on Japan, of course, and see who does create the nation of Japan in the future. That'll be something useful to be able to know. What lord will do it? Who will lead Japan into the future? Amdo doing really well, though. Really well, Tujabid. Um, they have obviously got their Buddhist religion, kingdom tier title, allied to Kashmir. Well, yeah, what's your diplomacy look like? Amdo. Why can't I do that? Oh, yeah, because we clicked on them. Let's go over here, go to Amdo. Okay, Amdo. Yeah, they've got, they've got people here and there. They're allied down here. They've got claims upon lots of lands, actually. Definitely over here in Yalung. So, yeah, they could definitely spread out even more. Will they become a challenger to Jin? I don't think they will. I don't think it's likely. Byzantium's still the strongest. Jin, uh, Deccan. Deccan, yeah, Deccan and Jin going against each other. That's big. That is big. 0% now. So, it looks as though it's got more of an even battle these days. Egypt, of course, France, Delhi, Sweden, Asturias. It's an interesting list there. You know, with Egypt, I don't know how long... Can anyone really stop Egypt? Let's have a quick look. If we go back to where Egypt is. I mean, Egypt's actually in a very good position because a lot of this land down here, they could definitely beat people over here and over here. So Egypt has a lot of good land to be able to take. Really, their only opposition 
is Byzantium. But as long as Byzantium is being kept in being held by their vassals, and the war did finish, and Cyprus is still a vassal to Byzantium, and they're at war with Yarkand. So Yarkand should be over here somewhere. Where was Yarkand? Wait, wait, wait. Let's have a quick look. So, where's Yarkand? I don't see red. Oh, here we go, Yarkand. So they're at war with these guys up here. Very small little nation up here in the corner. Poor Yark, this, this poor Sultanate. This poor man. It's a, it's a kingdom title, apparently. Doesn't look like it, but they call themselves a kingdom. You know, that's what they want. But yeah, Egypt's in a very good position. We could see them get stronger. Um, Egyptian Ural up here. Samarkand, what's going on with you? Yeah, vassal, being a vassal of Egypt, of course, you know, that just increases Egypt's power even more. And that's the kind of thing I'm thinking, is that we've got all of that, and this, and down here. I think up here is going to be hard for them to expand, you know, trying to concentrate on the land over here. And, and with the rebels up here, I, I think it's just going to be really difficult to control this. And I, I think it's the same with a lot of these scattered nations. A lot of these lands where they're not in the main area of their kingdom or empire or duchy, they're likely going to lose those lands to rebels. Um, due to the cultural and religious differences and etc. And also because it's harder for them to maybe keep control over it from via nations around them. So I think we're going to see that quite a bit. Um, so it's not just them, but I think that will be a weakness for them. Uh, Nori, oh my. Nori is not looking so good. Perm and Suomi. Ooh, Perm. What is this about right now? Attacker, Permian Conquest of Anar. I'm assuming they probably promised something to Suomi. That is what I think is going to happen up here. We could see these guys get taken. I'm happy this didn't get taken out because their name is broken. <laughs> so that would be nice to see, you know. I'm liking Perm. I like that Perm is doing well. You know, this Grand Principality, you know, they're Catholic, sadly, not Sumanusco. But, you know, for me, it's kind of nice to see this. And, and now with no particular major wars going on, we increase the speed. And we can kind of see what's going on there. It's obvious they're getting destroyed. We don't need to get a closer eye on that. Uh, England did take the lands from Lithuania, though Lithuania does still control London. So kind of that outpost over here, I guess we could say. Germany right now has gotten German pretender rebels. We've also got Proto separatists still over here. Uh, yeah, just making sure that they've beaten Yarkan. They have defeated them, most likely. Junior partners, Ferrara. Add with Gilway and Gwynedd. And what is this right here? Mauritania. At war, Tlem Tlemcen is just not letting them go, are they? Tlemcen really wants to destroy Mauritania and grow as strong as possible. Attacker. Second Tlemcen conquest of Tadla. Mauritania and Mali once again. They're getting their butts kicked once again, it looks like. It's just Tlemcen. They can't beat Mali. Look at those Mali armies. Um, I think the Mali army... Yep, the Mali army, I think, destroyed them right there. So you can say this is already thanks to Mali, actually. Good job, Mali. Mali has definitely grown a bit. They just made peace and they ate some land from Tlemcen. They took this and this, it looks like. So Mali getting stronger and stronger. I, I like to see it, you know. Will we see Mali... On the world's greatest power list? Probably not. Probably not. But it'll be cool to see it. They could easily eat all these guys down here. We've got some air separatists. There's war going on between these guys. All these smaller tribes. You know, underneath Mali, they're nothing. Underneath the shadow of Mali, they can't compare. And if we go down further into Africa, we should check out the rest of the world. Uh, Lunda doing very well, but looks like they're coming under fire. Kalundui and Tio, and Pretender Rebels at the same time. Luba, you know, Luba's over here, Lunda's over here. So which ones was it? Kalundui. Where's Kalundui? I don't see Kalundui. Ah, Kalundui. They're up. <laughs> There's not much of them left. Kuba and Lunda. So, okay, Kuba and Lunda have allied together. And Kalundui looks like they might fall. You've got Lunda men there, Kalundui men down here. And also there was peace. Peace has happened. Well, there we go. That was lovely. But is Kuba still in it? it looks like Kuba, though, was left in it. Yes, they were. So Lunda just left Kuba out in the cold. And they've been attacked by Congo and Ndongo. 
Oh my, what a betrayal. What a betrayal by London, looking after their own neck. Cuba's dead. Congo is going to destroy them. And then they're going to allow Kalundwi to get back. What a comeback. We've got Mutapa taking over all the lands down here. Um, Madagascar. Look how big Madagascar is. That's a big place. You know? You never think of it being that big, but I guess maybe it is. Nothing else really to say over here. We can have a quick look over in the Americas for now. And over here we can see uh, Chaka looks like it's grown a little bit. We've got peasant revolts though going on. We've got Cusco which is expanded. Seems like the Incas are starting to fight each other. We can have a quick look at the diplomatic things going on. Uh, Cusco has some friends. Well, that's really it. Chaka has got some friends there. And over here they've got a royal marriage. Other than that, not really much. There's no real, like, wars going on currently. Nothing major. Ooh, the shoe. We saw them last time. They were at war, and they were winning, and they took all of it. They did not care. Currently, wow, they were at war with everyone. Okay. So the rest of the nations of these lands have seen a problem. They decided that they can't allow them to keep running free, and so they decided to attack them. Culture-wise, they are uh, Putin. You know, they're, they're different cultures to these guys, yeah. They're a different culture, so that they can see the threat that they pose. And so they're all fighting after them. Now, let's have a, quick, let's have a closer look at this. So they've got 11,000 men. They have a lot of men. And actually, the enemies, if they put all their men together, it's pretty equal. Nope, 27,000 actually for the enemies. And actually, they're attacking Tlaxala. So this is actually a war with Tlaxala. Who is obviously uh, this one. And Shu, I guess, is helping them. Don't know why. They don't seem to be allies. No, they are allies. Yes, yeah, sorry. I, I always forget when you're playing as the nation. Yeah, of course you can't see. If we click on that, there we go. They are allies. Allies with uh, Tlaxala and the Aztecs. So, someone attacked them. No, Tlaxala attacked Tarascan. Hmm... Okay, that, that's interesting. They thought they had the major power behind them. We have, obviously, these guys here. That's a big war going. Who will come out on top? Right now, they're losing. So it's not going well. I feel like these guys are going to defeat them. Oh, well, poor Shu. Maybe they won't lose anything, though. Maybe they'll take more land from these guys and allow maybe, you know, Tarascon or Totonac to get a little bit bigger. They might be safe or maybe forced to just release someone we go over here to the Native American lands, the tribes are at peace. Look, at look, it's so peaceful. Literally nothing is happening. Like, no one is moving. We're at five speed. No one's moving. I, I could just sit here and just sit here and just love the lovely borders, you know? Whenever we want to get away from the chaos of Europe, we can just sit here and just admire, admire the purity of it all. <laughs> we can admire the purity. But for now, we must go back back so ooh, yeah we got these guys of course up here pretty peaceful for them as well pretty peaceful people apparently uh things over here in the east look pretty well basically what we left though usagi usugi whatever they're called has lost a lot of power who is this then ashikaga so ashikaga has a, a lot of uh daimyos and they've managed to come together and actually defeat them so good for them they took a lot of land he has now got the most power. Good for you, Shogunate. Good for you, Shogun Ashikaga. Show those stupid lords who's boss. He's just a lord. He's a daimyo. He should listen to you. He should listen to him. So maybe he can do maybe he can bring order to Japan. But what is this? Ito and Shiba is a daimyo of Ashikaga. Ah, okay, so he's actually a daimyo of his. So he kind of went out of line. He brought him, made him kneel before him, but Hosokawa is still, you know, apparently kneeling. He's doing what he should be doing. The Empire currently, 13 tributaries. How did the war go? I think Deccan won, because Bihar looks a lot smaller than it did before. He only has one vassal now, so I think he also annexed his other vassal. So Deccan looking good and powerful these days. Religion-wise, Hindu religion is surviving... But for how long? How long? We do not know. That is the question of all time. But look at the Buddhism. 
Look at the Buddhism. It's everywhere. Buddhism is a wall, basically. It's a wall across, uh, protecting everyone from, I guess, Jin. We got a bit of animist over here, though. Don't know where this animist came from. Is that normally there? I don't remember. I've not played in China because normally China's too big and powerful. It never usually feels that fun to play as them. But really liking these guys. Are they Empire tier yet? Still a kingdom rank. We want to see them become an empire. Who's your friends these days? Okay, they got, you know, Tibet. That's really it. Yeah, Tibet's really their only friend. Poor them. How, how, how are you, Delhi? How are you looking? You, you got a big enemy down south. You're also friends basically with Tibet and Ava. Well, Delhi and Deccan, they're both on the world power list, aren't they? Yeah, Deccan, 973 Delhi. About half. So they are much, even though they're both on the world power list, there's a big difference. You kind of have like Deccan, Jin, and Byzantium are really the world powers. Which is kind of nice because you know, you've got you know, Byzantine here, um, you got Deccan, and then Jin. It kind of goes across different places. Um, Egypt, France. France is really... the Bulgaria? What? Is there another civil war right now? Bulgaria and Cilicia. So again, we have a civil war. I mean, we had to expect it, didn't we? We knew this was coming. We know they don't like Byzantium. We know they don't. We know this is just inevitable. How's it looking? But Cyprus this time decided to side with Byzantium, even though they fought till the end. They decided to side with Byzantium still, and Bulgaria and Cilicia, are, are, yeah, they're doomed. They're low morale. They haven't got as many men. It's not looking good. They have men over here. Where are their armies? They have their armies are completely scattered and it's over already. It only just began. Can anyone stop Byzantium? Can anyone stop them? We'll have to just wait and see. Maybe one day someone can stop them. Let's go back out then. Uh, English Rufania is being absolutely destroyed. So England. You're not at war with anyone. So why is Sweden did I click on the wrong thing? I must have, yeah. Sweden, Clemson, Lithuania, and Flanders, and Germany, and Poitou. What are these wars about? English conquest of York. So England is attacking Sweden for York, and defender against German conquest of Minsk. So yeah, again, having their land split about has not really helped. That's Gwynedd. I clicked on Gwynedd. England. So England's fighting a lot of people, as we can see here. They got claims on most of uh, Britannia. And did the war just end? Oh, Lithuania got its lands back. Okay, so Germany and Poitou is still going on, but they lost against uh, Sweden and Lithuania. Lithuania looking nice. Um, perm, did you get... Oh my... Oh my! Look at this Perm! Perm, you marvellous beast. Virus Tushtan. What a grand principality it is, I agree. Um, Sweden, looking pretty nice. Lapish separatists. The Lapish want to come back. Uh, Finnish Russia, so basically Suomi. Lapish separatists once again. We've got some Austrian noble rebels. Okay, yeah, here in the Austria lands up here. France, what's going on with you? War. Lyon. The War of Lyon. And I don't know where Leon is. <laughs> where is Leon? Okay, so a quick look at them. Click on them. Who are your enemies? Where is Leon? I can't even see Leon. Okay, there's some enemies here. Leon, where are you? I... Oh, there. Okay, Leon is... <laughs> oh, poor little Leon. Poor little Leon. I mean, that, this one. I mean, they're gonna, they're gonna fix themselves. The border's gonna fix themselves because you're gonna get these smaller nations and little pieces here and there just get eaten up. And as you can see, the English could not control these lands over here, and so they've been losing these wars, and they're losing once again. Germany and Poitou. Uh, Gwynedd, I think, took this before, maybe from last when we were here. Great Britain, just being Great Britain. Who's your friends? Who, what are you looking at? Okay, got claims along down here as well. Leonese separatists. Nice. Look at the Holy Roman Empire. 
Germany is getting two votes right now. So is Provence. So, uh, Upper Burgundy is back in Fruli. Baden's only getting one vote right now. Perishil, you're still a vassal, but they have high liberty to style. Independent supported by Great Britain. Wow, Tlemcen's still looking okay. Mauritania is split about. Mauritania will get destroyed uh, if they stop being protected by Mali. Mali, stop protecting them. You've eaten up this guy over here. He's getting that border. We could see Mali go to the New World, possibly. What ideas have you gone for, my good sir? Eco everyone's going for economic. Is that what's happened? Is everyone just going to go for economic? Let's check. Let's check. Um, Asturias. What did you go with? Are you... No. There's no is this broken? Are they all going for economic? Is that what's going to be happening here? So they've got... Yeah, the, the uh, junior partner, Gelray, Mali, and Gwynedd. Interesting vassals. Let's go have a quick look at France. Okay, wait. No, this this can't be. This can't be. Okay, innovative. Okay. Phew. Okay, I got a bit worried that there was a bug making everyone go for economic. But England's not looking great. Sweden has taken over basically most. Germany got some land on here. So you've got like Sweden taking over the south of England. Lithuania and Germany have little colonies here, you know, trade posts, shall we say. Uh, De Hubarth, its own independent lord. Wow, what culture? You're Russian. Yeah, he's Russian. We've got England basically just up here. And English, English Ruthania is more, most of England, apparently. Yeah. Great Britain is going to be kind of the, the proper England, isn't it? Yeah. They're the, they're the proper England, right? I mean, they're Russian, but again... They're the proper kind of Britain, shall we say, I, I guess. Um, we could look at the culture, see how that's gone. Anglo-Saxons still very big around here. They've not been able to get rid of them. Yep, no matter what they do, they just can't get rid of them. Um, Greek, Khazar still there. Italian. What's that? There yeah, are Lombards over here. Good to see, good to see. How is the uh, Imperium? There's the, uh, the Holy Roman Empire. Not, not, you know, massive, but, you know, it's something. It's something they can be proud of, I guess. But, yeah. I guess we'll have a look at some other places. Um, no, no, I want to go on all. All view. There we go. Perfect. You can see everyone once again. Finnish, Lithuania, Suomi. Noriri is, is actually still here. It's, it's got a little bit. How are you, Norway? How are you? Did you get any new idea groups? What are your ideas? Economic ideas. Okay, still just going for economic. That's fine. It's fine. He can do what he wants, you know. They're a free spirit. You've got not a war, but Pakajan peasants. Okay, we'll leave you to do what you want. Um, down here, the Congo basically ate up the whole of Luba. Um, sorry, Cuba. Luba, Cuba. It, it's confusing. Cuban separatists over here trying to fight back to gain freedom from the Congo. It's not going to work. Kalundwi got some land back. Lunda did pay for their betrayal. It looks as though everyone decided to gang up on them. Yaka, I think, took some land. Kasenji, Chokwe, I think they all took land, actually, even Kikonja. So there you go. They paid for their betrayal of uh, Cuba. So I, I guess, you know, they got their comeuppance. Ooh, look at this. They've gone pretty big over here. Who's in charge? Princess Tombola Mwenne Mutapa. Is that the same dynasty as them? Yeah, Mut same dynasty as Mutapa. Good to see. What is the war over here? Egyptian Shiwa separatists. See, the, the Egyptians can't seem to get their men down here, apparently. And so these, look at these separatists. They're Matt and Kafis. There's two different separatist groups. And the Egyptians aren't even going to stop them. What are you doing? Rebel uprising, yeah. They they're getting there. They could lose all this land down here, which, like I said, it's it's this is what's making it difficult for them to really gain control. Uh, Tunis, who remember are in the Holy Roman Empire, they have just gained a lot of land. They could become the next emperor. They are an elector, but they're not vote. They don't want to vote for themselves though. Is back in Ivrea. How are you doing, Tunis? Terenti of Gardinus. 
Now, he has cultured Germans. We've got to get these Germans in North Africa. Yeah. They could be a threat to Egypt. Maybe Egypt is not as hot as we thought. You can intervene in wars between other great powers. Yeah, Byzantium, Tibet, Deccan, Mongolia, Delhi. That's a big war. Okay, wait, 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 wait. That's a big thing right now. What is this? Byzantine conquest of Mamana. They're trying to attack Tibet. They've got their vassals behind them. And actually, they've got a lot more men. I fought with Deccan, maybe, and Delhi. They might stand a chance. It looks like it's not enough, actually. So Byzantium will uh, expand even further east, which I I'm hoping we see them come to blows with Jin. Could you imagine a war between them? That would be amazing to see. This what I don't mind. A lot of people complain that Byzantium was going to be too strong, but they've had a lot of internal conflicts to try and deal with. They can deal with that. They deserve to keep the land. And it's going to be fun to see great powers come to blows or see if other people will come against them because will we see a coalition form against them? That's something we need to think about. We, You'd think there would be, but I guess they've not had time to expand enough so or to eat too much. What's that? Ger yeah, Germany's got... I always forget Germany's land up here. Germany's a weird place. Um, Austria looks like it's grown quite a bit. Why are the armies going to come to blows? Here we go. All the armies come to blows. The Byzantium men coming into India and Tibet. Look at this. Yep. Deccan has got lots of men there, but it won't be enough. It's not going to be enough. Um, up north... Samarkandian Tartary. What else they to call this? Kamak not looking so great. And of course, remember, they are a vassal of Egypt. They're extremely strong. Liberty desires only 32. So there we go. And great power list. We'll look at that. We'll look at that in a bit more detail at the end, I think. Each episode, we'll look at that in much more detail at the end. But yeah. Flanders. Great Britain. Okay. And I think we're going to end this part here. Um, guys, thank you for joining me. I would like to keep these episodes... I, I'm hoping we have as many episodes around as we did in CK2. I think that would be kind of nice to have if you ask me. But you don't know what will happen. So far, I'm liking what's happening. And I hope you guys like the way I'm doing my commentary. Please tell me if you do like it. Do you like the fact I'm using the diplomatic um, choice here? Going into the countries a bit more detail. You know, that type of thing. Do you like that? I would love to know and make sure I'm doing the correct thing that you guys can enjoy. And here are the great powers right now. Byzantium is twice as twice as developed as China. That shows your power. They need some. They need their vassals to fight against them. Someone needs to free their vassals. It's the only way to stop them, I think. But you know, seeing Sweden on here, you know, Asturias, you know, doing pretty well. And if we have a quick look at the um, institutions. Which for some reason I can't click. Do I have to go into the country then? Okay, let's go into the country. Let's look at the institutions. So, Renaissance. Where did Renaissance start? North Konkan. What? Where is North Konkan? Can I not? Am I too far away? Yeah, I'm probably too far away. North Konkan. Normally, you're supposed to start... Go to. Okay, go to. What? The Renaissance started in India. Well, there you go. Yeah, so India in the East has got the Renaissance. They're imagining older times. Um, it's got to Byzantium. It's... Yeah. You know, these countries over here don't have it yet. Which has meant, you know, nations like you know, Sweden are falling behind. Yeah, Delhi's got it 100%. Yeah, only Sweden's the um Asturias has it though. They got hundred percent. France has it as well, apparently. Yeah, Renaissance not embraced. Well, there you go. So that could make a big difference. Now we we'll have to wait and see where will colonialism come. I don't think anyone's gone to the New World, has it? No one's gone to the New World, so where will it begin? That's kind of my thinking at this moment in time. I mean, if we have a quick look at the main world, I mean we can't I mean we can have a quick look. I mean, there's no one there. Yeah. No one's here. What about... Who owns these islands? 
No one owns these islands. Does anyone have anything? We got Mauritania. No one's got these. No one's got the Azores. I I don't know who's gonna who's actually gonna get colonialism. We'll so have to wait and see, guys. Um, I guess we go look, you know, Southeast Asia. Who knows who's gone down to Southeast Asia? And it looks like no one's really gone down there either. So we'll have to wait and see, guys. I hope you enjoyed. Hope you'll come back next time, and I'll see you then. Goodbye.